Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, today I'm going to work on getting the ABS system back in operation. The car is telling me that it's not working from the warning on the dash. This will be round two. Round one was checking and cleaning the sensors off. To me, round two is uh, replacing or repairing the ABS module. So you got to do these rounds and take these guesses if you don't take the vehicle to the dealer and have it scanned or at a authorized uh, certified type of Jaguar repair place where they have the proper scanner to get the right codes. If you get the right code, you can go straight to the problem. If not, you got to take these stages like I'm taking. So when that ABS unit is not working, you get your ABS warning over there by the tachometer. You get that orange dash letting you know that something's wrong with something in the system. And then you got those two warnings there. Track unit's not available and ASC not available. I believe that's all related to the ABS system problem. Now, if you're driving along and you don't want to see those warnings and you want to go ahead and see your display, just hit your clear button over here, press it once, whatever's on the screen will be dismissed, and now you go back to your uh, normal uh, fuel consumption gauges or whatever you got the settings set on, and when you push the uh, end of that button there, it changes that display to see whatever is next. See, I have instant fuel, average speed, uh, miles, miles remaining maybe, range. No, there's miles remaining the range, which is 118 miles. Fuel gallons used since I reset it and the average fuel consumption. These are the tools you need to get this job done on this ABS module resolder repair. You need a soldering iron, electrical solder, 10 millimeter ratchet for the uh, battery compartment, pair of pliers, a quarter inch ratchet, a T27 or a T30 torque screw. You need a reverse torque E5. You need 13 millimeter box in, 11 millimeter box in and you need a drill bit and uh, some tape and whatever else you're going to use to reseal that unit. If you don't already have one of these E5 reverse torque sockets, you will probably have to go to a specialty place like Harbor Freight because uh, most of your auto parts stores don't have them unless you buy them in a big kit. As you can see, this one was less than $3. The ABS system is there. And the module, as you can see, is right here uh, on the front of the system unit. Uh, this unit here, this aluminum thing, has pins that stick out into the ABS controller. And the ABS controller uh, has to come off. And most of the time, the problem is that there's broken solder joints inside that system. So what you do is you disconnect the lines, get them out of the way, you take the module off, then you open up the module, you look for any broken solder joints and repair them, then you reseal the module closed and reinstall it and hook everything back up, bleed the brakes, and the system will test it and reset itself. Now I've seen posted in the Jaguar form that somebody said that they actually was able to bend these lines out of the way and get the unit out without uh, taking these lines off the hydraulic uh, connections. I don't want to risk uh, kinking these lines. If you kink them, you'll have to replace them and this is not my vehicle so I'm not going to risk that. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those lines and lose whatever fluid I'll lose and add that fluid back to the system. So anytime I disconnect something that's electronic or electrical, I usually disconnect the negative battery. So I'm gonna go in the trunk and disconnect the neg negative battery lead. You go in the trunk, 
you move everything off of this panel, you lift this panel out here, and you take, it looks like a 10 millimeter, disconnect that and insulate it so it can't reconnect itself. Next thing I'm going to do is release the clip from the brake lines there, and then another one on this side. The clip kind of interlocks with a zipper effect, so just unzip them and take them off. Next thing I'm going to do is unplug the electrical connector from it. It's got a special connector. You kind of lift up on it while you work it off. Lift up a little bit, work it off a little bit, lift it up. If you do it with two hands, it may be a smoother unplug, but as you can see, that thing is lift up a lot. And now, the plug is unplugged from the unit. I can't get to all of the torque screws on the ABS module with this relay bracket in here. So I'm going to lift up on this air conditioning switch and take these two screws out, one on top, one at the bottom, so I can move this relay bracket out of the way. I pulled those two screws out with a T27. They may be proper T30, but a T27 got those two out. So now I have this loose where I can get to at least the top torques. I'll have to figure something out for the bottoms. Next thing I'm going to do is get my reverse torque bit. And it is a E5. And that is what you use to get the screws out of the ABS module. If you try to use anything else, you'll probably strip it and have a heck of a time getting them out after that. But these are E5s. So, it's, there's uh, four of those E5s. Two up top, two down the bottom. Go ahead and pull those. The frame of the car is actually in the way to get the lower two torque out. So, I'm going to put the bit on there and try to turn it loose with a pair of pliers. But, uh... If you wanted to lift this whole unit out, you got to get to it from under the car, take the splash panel out, then it looks like a washer fluid reservoir or bottle of some sort is in the way. You got to take that out, and then you could take the bolts out at the bottom of this bracket assembly and lift the whole unit up so you can get the uh, sockets and stuff on the ABS module. Okay, now I got all four screws loose. And the unit will unplug from the base of the unit. Now I got to pull these lines out of the way so that I can lift them out. I'm going to do the lines last so I don't lose too much fluid. The next thing I'm going to do is loosen these three brake lines and lift them up and try to move them out of the way a little bit. Especially since I already got the clips removed from the lines halfway down the motor. Before you take these lines loose, mark them or take a picture of them so you can see how tight they were in there. You don't want them leaking when you put them back in. Okay, I got those three lines loose. Now I'm going to work the module off, move, moving those lines out of the way as I get it. Wipe that unit, top of that unit off as best you can because you don't want dirt washing down into there while you got those lines loose and trying to get that uh, module out of there. Okay, as I was lifting the unit up, I realized there was another plug plugged into the bottom of it. So I had to unplug that. And basically, here's the plug here. It's just got two squeeze tabs on it. Squeeze the top and the bottom and it releases, pull it out. Then once you get the unit out, you got to put these, reconnect these lines. You can actually drive the car with this unit out. So hand screw those connectors back in. This is an aluminum piece. It's real soft. It's easy to cross thread that and mess that up. Don't do it. Hand screw those in. Get them down as far as you can. Then tighten them up. Okay, this is what the ABS module looks like. Those are the two plug connectors. Easier to get off the Jaguar than some other cars. You don't want dirt and stuff to get into those pinholes. And uh, this unit is actually a sealed unit. You can see your control number and part number on there in case you want to order a replacement one. You got to make sure that you get one that matches. I think that L and F number is the number that you want to match. Now, this is a sealed unit. What most people do is take the seam around here and pry this open, get it open somehow. 
Uh, then, once they get it open, they find the two broken solder joints and solder them together. Uh, another option that I've seen that was kind of ingenious, somebody knew where the solder joints was, and they was in this corner where this notch is, right under here and under here. So what they did was they cut a hole in the unit, soldered those points, and after they soldered them, they uh, sealed that back up with some kind of tape and uh, glue silicone like people use to reseal the whole thing i'm gonna try uh even another ingenious thing i'm gonna drill two holes right here one in the right there at the corner and one a little bit over to see if i can see those solder joints and if i do i'm gonna try to heat those two solder joints up and plug those two holes see if the unit works when you're drilling a hole through this plastic make sure you put less pressure as you get closer to breaking through because uh, the drill bit kind of breaks through and it, it'll jam down in there and you don't want to bust your control board or nothing. Okay, so these are the two holes I drilled in it. And if you can see down in there, there is the two notorious solder joints behind those two holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my solder iron and I'm gonna feed the solder through the one hole over to the next heat that up with the solder iron and re-swell it and then i'm gonna do the same thing to the other joint and see if it works out for me it looks like i could have moved those drill holes over just a little bit but as i look into those holes i don't know if you can see it those joints do look damaged uh, maybe those solder joints are broken and bad Okay, here's my rosin core solder. So I'm going to put it down this hole and loop it over to that other side and hit that solder on it that way. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to hit those two solder joints right there. And, and my thought and goal was to drill a hole the size of a plug that I have, like a rubber plug. But at any rate, I could seal that little hole easy uh, with some silicone or some heavy-duty tape or something. But just make sure you clean it off real good before you try to seal it. Okay, I got the solder on both joints. You're doing that almost blind, so you got to be careful. You don't hold it on there too long and that you get enough solder on there to get those uh, joints swelled in good. Don't put too much and don't hold it there too long. You don't want to burn your board. I didn't like the way they looked a second ago, so I went on ahead and heated them up again, 10 seconds each, so now they look uh, better and a lot smoother. Now I'm going to clean this casing up with acetone, uh, plug these holes with uh, a little dab of silicone on each one, and I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this ABS unit. Okay, I put a couple of rubber plugs in the hole, now I'm going to put this uh, speed tape over it, duct tape, but uh, black tape will look better. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the unit in and reattach it. Since those lower screws are so hard to get in and reach, you may want to set those in place before you plug your ABS unit in. So now I got the ABS unit plugged in. I got those two lower screws in. I'm going to tighten those down. I'm going to put in the two upper screws. I went on ahead and hand tightened in my my uh, hydraulic lines, my brake lines in the top of the unit. I only took these three loose because that fourth one wasn't in the way. So I'm going to tighten those down. Then I'm going to plug those uh, two plugs in. Okay, I got those lower two uh, tightened down. That's how I did it. I put the socket on there, screwed them in hand tight first, put the socket in there, screwed them in hand tight. Then I put the uh, pliers on there and twisted them a little bit more uh, with the pliers on it. So... Don't get them too tight, because if you got to take it out, you won't be able to get it out. Okay, I got the brake lines tight. I dried it up super, super good with my rag so I could check for leaks. I got my screws in my ABS unit. I got my two wire connectors in. Now I'm going to put that relay bracket back on and clip this uh, air conditioning line back in this clip in this radiator. Uh, clip those two uh, straps to hold the brake lines in place. Last but not least, I hooked up my battery and, and covered that back up. 
Okay, here's the first startup after my quick fix solder repair. Turn the car on since I had the battery disconnected. Let things kind of sync up. Start the car. No ABS light. How about that? Still driving 15 miles later. Still no ABS or warning light. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.